This is one of the the hardest games I've ever seen. Like, like this is really like a nightmare scenario. Travis Davis Super I I defended Hurts all season, but he's terrible. He runs every time instead of moving the pocket. Always looks uncomfortable with the best offensive line. He just bails to the right. As soon as it's not there, he takes off to the right, and it's instantly the play is over. It's over. As soon as he goes to the right, it's over. Justin Davis Super is taking a break from Cowboys to check on you. It's not good, man. It's not good. See, the day of a super chat, man, because as a Raven fan, I was hoping you smacked those smug wires out of playoffs. But sorry for y'all imploding. I think it's best to just reevaluate. Yeah, reevaluate and quit. Here's a deep pass, wide open, Barkley caught the 20 yard line. Oh my god, this is bad. I fire everybody at halftime. I go, if I'm Jeffrey Lord, I'm calling a team. You're fired. You're fired. Crush Davis Super Dad. Keep this here and please extend him. No. Get rid of him. He stinks. GD, GD, Davis Super Dad. Because Blaine L. Brunson, he started talking trash to you. Man, this is beyond that. First and 10 at the 20. Taylor dumps it off wide open. Touchdown. It's a blowout. It's a blowout. Why didn't you are Giants? Dallas is going to sit their starters at halftime. Forget us. Look what David Superjack. Jalen is playing worse than Wentz out there. DJ David Superchap. Has a coach ever been fired at a wild card game? I don't know, but I would fire him at halftime. I'm not kidding you. I would fire him at halftime. Well, good morning, friends. Mark Holmes here. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Because I got my man Joe Boo in the house. Oh, it is poor cousin Jetro. Jetro's not feeling too good. He's over there playing with his one Super Bowl trophy. And of course, we got Joe Bear in the house. And I am so excited right now. You know, <clears throat> it's playoffs. I want Cowboy fans, I want you to understand how blessed we are, okay? The Cowboys have had their history a blessings of of so much. Other teams don't have all the things that we have and we are fortunate to be in the position we are. We are in the playoffs three years in a row. I don't know this for sure, but I'm going to say the Mike McCarthy error here with the Cowboys, I think they have more wins than anybody else. I may be wrong on that. I know over the course of the last three years, they definitely have, but we can even throw in that first year. And we are blessed. Now, we need the playoff success. I'm not going to lie to you. But I want to revisit some things here because it was, I think that this is the Cowboys' Babe Ruth moment. I honestly do, okay, because we got <laughs> we got clowned. I, I want to play this. I, I just I want you to go back through because there's a lot of people who just say you know Dak Prescott sucks. So they won't they they can't put it across their mouth to say that he is an MVP for this team. Even though the Cowboys have more blowout wins than anybody else, that Dak Prescott leads the NFL in touchdowns, that he is in the top five of everything, and mostly like one, two, or three in every passing category there is, that without the surrounding cast that maybe Baltimore or, or San Francisco or the Eagles have, that you can't look and say he is just a system quarterback or anything like that. And going into the season... He said, I will not throw 10 interceptions and became the butt of all jokes. Okay? He became the butt of all jokes. And Dak Prescott has put it all on the line. Let's just revisit that conversation. 
the NFC burning questions. I'll get back to the college, but let's go through the pros here. Neek, can the Packers upset the Cowboys Sunday afternoon in Dallas? I mean, I don't think they will, but I think they can. And I think what my, my man Goody Man has done out there and building up this roster and um, attracting a bunch or drafting a bunch of really talented, young, skilled players and having the guts to move on from Aaron Rodgers to Jordan Love. The way that Jordan Love's played all season has been up and down at, at points, but it's really leveled out. He's awesome, and this team is good. I don't think they win but I think they're good. Raziano, the second half of the season, Jordan Love has been the best quarterback in the NFL. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. Better, I'm, I'm there have been a couple guys. Oh, no. but, but yeah, I, I'm curious when I, I'm, I'm messing up this morning. Okay, I, I think Forgive me. We'll, we'll save that. I, I apologize. I apologize. I gave you the wrong one. That, this is broadcast media. That Let's brought the quarterback to the forefront. Yep, just two days shy of his 30th birthday, Dak Prescott at the podium today at a time where his career could be at a crossroads. Let's go back to sports anchor Nate Ryan in Oxnard, California for more on number four. Nate? Yeah, hey, ECs, what's going on? Happy Thursday night to you. Dak Prescott paid like a top 10 quarterback on paper. Certainly seems that way, but the statistics last season would not suggest that. Led the league in interceptions last season, did Prescott. And the interceptions are what everybody wanted to talk about earlier everybody. this afternoon at the podium. Actually, his performance in practice the last two days may be teetering on the negative side. Prescott throwing two interceptions in two days, including one earlier this afternoon to defensive back Nishan Wright. Now the hope for Prescott this season is that the change of Mike McCarthy to calling plays will take a little bit more pressure off Prescott. He won't have to throw the ball as much. Prescott even earlier this month won't have to throw the ball as much. Camp that he at a football practice camp rather that he would not throw more than 10 interceptions this season. That was his promise to the media earlier this afternoon at the podium. Of co course he was asked about it doubling down. I am going to lessen my interception numbers. I am going to lessen my interception numbers. Uh, that is a guaranteed. Um, but we're trying to gain chemistry here. We're trying to be aggressive. As I said, that's who our coach is. And so uh, and that's who I am. That's, that's the confidence I've gained in myself. And I've worked so hard to be able to, to have this confidence and be able to make the throws that I'm making. If it continues every day, come back to me. And yeah, it might change my, my mood a little bit. <laughs> yeah. You're the quarterback of the Dallas Cowboys. You get that spotlight. Hey, for reference, two days, two interceptions for Dak Prescott. He hasn't thrown a touchdown pass. Meanwhile, his backup, Cooper Rush, he's thrown no interceptions, no <laughs> touchdown passes. Certainly, Rush has looked like the better quarterback through just two days, though, of training camp. What a beautiful night here in Oxnard. We decided to take it off the football field and take you out to the pier tonight. How about it, guys? Yes, Cooper Rush was looking better in, in, in camp. And, you know, these are things that we had heard. Listen. Dak is not a top 10 quarterback. Is Dallas becoming a team that is winning despite Dak? Now, that sounds harsh. <laughs> mm -hmm. But right now, Dallas has a top three scoring. This defense. is from last year. 32 teams. They're top three. This is an elite defense. They are a top seven rushing team. 32 teams. Top seven. Yet, Dak is one of three quarterbacks that has more picks than games started. The other two are Matt Ryan and Davis Mills. Dak is not a top 10 quarterback. Okay, not a top 10. How about Eagle fans trolling us with Dak Prescott's, look at this, I won't have 10 interceptions this year. Y'all are, oh, yeah. M maybe your quarterback should have done that. Okay, and how about Skip Bayless? Let's make a case that Cooper Rush is almost as good as Dak, and sometimes I think he can be a little more consistent than Dak. Well, you when has Dak ever shown you any routine consistency? You need to put that on the briefcase and walk up out of here. Uh, make a yeah, those are all the things that we heard about one Rain Dakota Prescott, okay? Um, it's, it's amazing to me, but all of those mother humpers need to eat crow and say, we were wrong. We were wrong. Everybody knew for sure Dak Prescott was going to be the interception king. But it's funny because they don't talk about it. And here's the thing that's kind of crazy, because when I say the Babe Ruth moment, or should I say the Joe Namath, I guarantee, I guarantee we win the game. Dak Prescott's put it all on the line. The fact that Dak Prescott literally did this shit I want you to understand, 
how this shit could have blown up in his face. You'll remember. Hmm. Oops. Broke ass media. Get a lot of shit. Decisiveness Kick that ass. Overrated quarterback. Got more turnovers than a bake sale! And I get it. Yeah. If you're not a fan of something, shitting on it can make you feel good. But what if I told you that now it can do some good too? Mm -hmm. Let me show you how. Yep. First, if you're 45 or older, talk to your doctor about getting screened for colon cancer. Then, if you're prescribed a home screening kit like this, Grab the sample collection container and place a sticker of something you want to shit on right on the underside. <laughs> yeah. Not a fan of marine life? Slap it on. Have issues with old timey. Almost pictures? got that one. Boom. It works with we, anything. We can still get that one. To large American predatory birds. We definitely did on that one. Follow the instructions on collecting and shipping your sample. Here we go. And in about two weeks, you'll have the results. It's that easy to get screened for colon cancer and make your feelings abundantly clear. So talk to your doctor today. Home screening kits like Cologuard are for people 45 or older of average risk, not for high-risk people like Dak. Dak actually wouldn't use a home test kit, but he's so committed to preventing people from getting colon cancer that he agreed to star in this video we wrote for him without any concern for his safety. I definitely deserve that. Visit leadfrombehind.org to get more information and some stickers we made. Now, do you realize if the Cowboys lost to the Eagles and just kept going downhill after that, how much shit Dak Prescott would have? Dak, oh, it would it would have been crazy. But he's put his shit on the line. And he's backed it up. I believe in him. I've always believed in him. I believe that, I, I still believe, as good as Dak is, as good as guys like Josh Allen are, as good as most of these quarterbacks are, you still have to have the team and things go right for you. It's not enough just to have talent to the quarterback. That's a key. It's hard to do it without one, but you certainly can't do it with just one. And as good as Dak has played, if C.D. Lamb is not doing what he's doing, Dak's not getting all this praise. Dak's not the MVP without C.D. Lamb. Dak's not the MVP without the team around. Dak is not the MVP as we see with the Eagles just because of play calling. You can look and say the Eagles have the same team they had last year with all you know great weapons, great running attack. They got a better running attack than we do. They have a better offensive line. But you see what play calling does for a team. But Dak He's called it. And I believe 100% in that guy. Now, the team gets back on the practice field tomorrow. And, you know, all of the stuff we have done getting here of the team going and being completely basically rebuilt after the Jason Garrett era to the Dak Prescott being injured and out the 2020 COVID season and basically reshuffling the offensive line that we're still trying to get together and rebuilding a defense that was historically the worst defense, scoring defense we've ever had. These years of building up and going in the right direction, this is where they need to start paying off. This is where we need to not just win the wild card, we need to win the next one and the next one. This is a golden opportunity, especially for guys like Demarcus Lawrence. It's getting long in the tooth for Tyron Smith, for those guys, because the past years we've had great players that deserve one, like a Jason Witten, like a Des Bryant, like a Tony Romo, but we just fell short. And the reality is it doesn't matter if you're one of those young guys like Deron Bland. There's no guarantee that you're going to have another opportunity. Ask Dan Marino these things. And the other part of the equation is because the Cowboys have been doing what they're doing, you may not be coming back the same team. Already we know about three teams that want to talk to Dan Quinn about being their head coach. So the time is right now. Now let's go back to ESPN. I've, I kind of screwed the pooch on there. And the burning questions that they have. 
a minute, wait a minute. It's, it's an wait echo minute. when the draft Jordan around. Love's numbers the last eight games. I mean, he, I think he's 17 touchdowns in one pick. His, his QBR is the highest in the league. Right. I, it's not an over. I, I don't think it's an, to use your expression, I don't think it's an overreaction. Yeah, the kid is playing it, great. He's playing great, but it's an overreaction. Dak Prescott's been the best yeah, quarterback. Matthew Stafford game. had a big second half of the um, season. Yeah. I, I think there's, there's some good. But I mean, look, you fall in love with guys pretty pretty yeah, quick. It is. Yeah, you, you, you'll, you'll crown MVPs early. You, you, you're, you're absolutely you're caught in the moment. Awesome what they're doing with that young yes, group there. Agreed. Absolutely incredible. Agreed. Right, okay. Let, I, I want to preface it something here because, see, this is a case where can take numbers and skew them any, any way we want. We often can take numbers and we'll, we'll fit them into the narrative that we want to try and take. And I probably am guilty of this. Because this is one of those ones because you hear Jordan Love has been hot. And he has 15, and one, 15 touchdown passes and one interception. Well, through the last seven games. Well, it was the Bears this past week. I think they have the number one pick. The Vikings the week before. Their defense is ass-ass. The Panthers. We know about the Panthers. Tampa Bay, which is a playoff team. I'll give you that. And the Giants that did look really good against um, the Eagles. But it's kind of like the Eagles are just bad. So those are the last five games. So not exactly really challenged. Uh, I will say they did beat the Chiefs. Um, that's probably their signature win, along with beating the Packers, uh, division foe, um, during the last seven games. So, yes, he's played well, but I don't know that he's Brett Favre or Aaron Rodgers yet. The record out Jeff Saturday is down on Jordan Love. Fair enough. <laughs> Nick, doing his thing. let me give you another one here. Let, let, me, let me get to the game here. Can, can Matthew Stafford absolutely devastate everyone in and win in Detroit for the first time in a playoff game, Graz. There, there, yes, he can. Uh, did, uh, did, um, sorry, L.A. is I got mixed up. Still yeah. seeing Stafford in Detroit. The Rams are playing as well as anybody. Uh, their only loss in, the, in their last eight games who overtime in Baltimore. That I mean, no shame in that. Look, it, it's, a, it's one of the youngest teams in the league, as Green Bay is as well. But... They have a veteran at quarterback. We know they have a veteran monster in the middle of their defensive line. The offense is functioning at a very high level. I think it's a dangerous game for Detroit, absolutely. Yeah, they have a young defense that's coming on. And like, like you mentioned, Aaron Donald is a problem for everybody. And also, that offense can score with anybody yep. when Matthew Stafford is on. So they're a scary team. Yeah, as, as much as the Lions, as good as they played, their defensive backs give up some big plays. Matthew Stafford's feast don't get on pressed. big plays. That's scary. I feel terrible for the fans in Detroit. They finally get this great season. Well, they haven't lost yet, Green. No, no, no. But I mean, if Stafford <laughs> comes in there and knocks them out, yeah. that's yeah. got to be the most Detroit's brutal way I, I for this season yeah. to end. I, I, they got to get pass rush on Stafford. Hutchinson can't be the only dude. I'm rooting for the Lions and those fans to finally Ooga. get one win. All right, let me come to you here. Jeffrey, let's talk about the, the last burning question will be the Eagles. Can they stop the bleeding Can they? Monday night in Tampa? Not if they look like anything like the last month. I mean, they, be, they better fix something <laughs> in a hurry because they played a, a poor team with it had really no interest in having to win last week in the Giants and got boat raced. I mean, they're pulling dudes in the second quarter. That is not good. They can't stop anybody on defense. They can't tackle. They give up big plays. They're not running the football the way they should. Hurts is, is out of sync. They're, they're, they're they're super simple on offense. Everybody knows what they're going to do. This is ugly. Like, they got to get this thing fixed if they want any shot. And he's got a finger, and A.J. Yeah, Brown's got a knee. A They've way. been banged up all year. It's a mess. And thus, you know, <laughs> I work with a, one of these lunatics. We're going to leave it there with know, the Eagles which is our right there. Over there. But and we've got plenty of time. But let me he say. banging the Sirianni drum. Yeah. If they lose the game on Monday night, and mm. he's not the only one. He's just the loudest. Is there any real chance that 11 months after coaching in the Super Bowl, Nick Sirianni's job could be in jeopardy? I, I, I think it's most likely not. But there is some chatter around this situation. It's like, you know, t what other openings could there be? Well, if Philly were to get embarrassed on Monday night and lose first round, yeah. you know, people, people are watching that situation. I don't have... Like from inside the Philadelphia building, oh, he's in trouble. Uh, I'm not sure they'd tell me that even if it was true. Right. But I, I do think people are watching that situation to see. They got rid of Doug Peterson, what, two years after he yeah. won the Super Bowl. Right. Correct. So it's not as if, you know, they haven't done something similar before. I, I think they, they lost both coordinators to head coaching jobs, mm -hmm. and it seems like that's had an effect. It and definitely has. And the head has. coach has not been able to sort of 
do whatever you would have expected him to do to fix it. So, I, I, yeah, I think it's, it's, it's if, at least yeah, it something sounds, to watch. It sounds unlikely, but if yeah. we are to entertain it, I think this is a good situation because Bill Belichick can still coach the hell out of a defense. And they've had a lot of injuries up in New England in their defense. Wait, you've put Bill Belichick, put Belichick in Philadelphia now? Bill Belichick. Okay, we can stop there. Bill Belichick is not going to go there. All right, good people. I hope you have a great day, and I will be seeing you guys soon. Our coach here, and as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Blue Sports Report. And the only thing else I got to say is.